Hi everybody, it's Denise Lush here with part two of our print to project. Now if you remember last Wednesday we created this background using some paints and art foamies and pastels and we have this beautiful subtle pattern background. So today we're going to turn this one piece of paper into a gift box. So Christmas is coming and we're going to make a gift box that you can put a Christmas present in. And it's very easy. You'll be surprised how easy this is. So no matter what size paper you have, as long as you score the same width, you're good to go. So we're going to take our piece of paper, flip it over, and put it against the edge of our scoreboard. And we are going to score at one and a half inches. And then we're going to rotate and score at one and a half inches. Now my scoreboard isn't long enough, so I'm just going to flip it and score the rest of the way at that one and a half inches. So now we're going to rotate again and score at one and a half inches, rotate and score at one and a half inches. And again, because my scoreboard isn't long enough, we we'll just flip that over and score the rest of the way. So now we have our perimeter done. Now we need a score in the middle. So you're going to find, after these score marks that we made, or it can be the center of the whole piece of paper, it doesn't matter, it's just the ruler is only so long, so I just figured out the center from my score lines. And it's great if you have a centering ruler. It makes it so much easier. So when I'm looking at this, my score lines are five and a half inches from the center. So I have found my center, and I'm just going to Got that with a pencil. Make sure I have my ruler straight. And I'm just going to make a mark at the top and at the bottom. So I know that's the center of my paper. Now, one and a half divided, by, divided in half <laughs> is three quarters. So we want to score on three quarters of each side of that centered line. So I'm just going to place that there. I know we're off that, but I mean, if you wanted to, you could do that. But I'm just putting my the pencil mark I made right there in that center. I'm going to take my scoring tool and go three quarters from that center line to the left and then three quarters from that center line to the right and score. So now we have the same width all the way around and in the center. So now we're just going to fold all of these. Let's remove our scoreboard out of the way. Now you can use a bone folder if you wish to reinforce 
those score lines. It's not necessary. So we're just folding on all of those score lines that we made. Don't forget your middle ones. Okay, so all our folding is done. We're going to open it back up. And we have the longest going this way. We don't have it vertical, we have it horizontal. And we are going to cut along, see how this creates a square from where our two score lines meet. And in the middle here we have a square and on the end. Same on each side. So we are going to cut along that score line up to this one that runs horizontally here. So I'm going to snip up to that score line on every single one. And then we're going to turn it and do the same thing on this side. So we're doing it on the two long sides. Now we're going to flip this over and we're going to put, I'm going to use double sided tape. You can use glue if you like. We're going to put some on each of these square flaps on the right side of your paper. So if we flip this over vertically up top on these two right here. I am just going to take my roll of tape, you can take anything that's circular, and I'm just going to line the bottom up right in that little corner. And I'm just going to draw a curve right there. So I'll zoom in and you can see that again. So I'm just lining up the bottom of my tape to this corner right here. And just drawing a little curve. And then we're going to take our scissors and just cut along that. And the same thing on the other side. Now we're going to remove all of our tape. Well, not the tape. We're going to remove that, you know, that paper that's on the tape. I'm going to remove that. I think that's the hardest part of making the whole box, <laughs> removing that paper from the double-sided tape. Okay, now we flip this over, 
fold up. We're working on the bottom of our box, so these curved ends right here are at the top. So I'm just working on these folds, getting these to fold in. Want our four squares in. And then we're going to bring this front flap up. And we're going to, I'll turn it this way so you can see better. We are going to bring, so we have this folded up, and then we're going to bring this flap here up and line up the edges. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. I'm going to line up those edges. And then it may be easier for these if you just bring up that box so then the edges are flush with your surface and stick those flaps against the sides. So this flap is being stuck here. That is the bottom of our box. Now our top, same idea. We're going to fold this up and bring this up and line up our edges. I just like to fold this backwards just to get a nice crease so when the person opens their box they can have it fully open. But we have created a gift box. So remember those burrs that we gel printed on an extra piece of paper? You can cut those out with the feet on or off and you can use them for tons of different things. It can be for art journaling, you can poke a hole in them and use them as gift tags, or if you have a homemade Christmas tree you could use it as a tree ornament. I'm sure you can find lots of uses for these cute little birds. So make that Christmas gift extra special this year by making your own gift boxes with some paper and your gel press plate. Have fun! Bye!